a little bit of a different video than what I usually do. This is in response to Sprocket's garage. He just put out a video today regarding the structural integrity of the Vanguard V twin. And it got me thinking that it's like, you know what? I have something that I could chime in about it too. And for all of you to get up to speed, go watch this video. I will link it down in the description. And once you're done there, come back and this will make a little bit more sense. But anyhow, he was talking about... Okay, here's part of one right here. The governors on these cams. I actually have a couple of them right here. And why you should not delete the governor on the Vanguard. I'm going to sit you guys down for a second here while I get this open. So, just like he described, these governors are riveted to the cam along with the compression release. And there's really two reasons why there's no point in deleting the governor. A, you'll just overspeed the engine to the point that it will just blow the connecting rods right out of it. And as well as the fact that there's a compression release on here, that means that this cam is hollow, like it, it's hollow all the way through more than the performance cams because the performance cams don't have any sort of compression release on them. So that is, there's one, there is an advantage to the performance cams. First of all, they don't even have any of the compression release or governor stuff because they are ground off of Briggs and Stratton blanks. And I've compared uh, a couple of cams, a couple of the stock cams to the old performance cam that came out of the engine that's in the Sears Custom. And you can see the base circle is actually a lot smaller. So... Do you need longer push rods? No, you don't. You can use the stock push rods. It's just that the adjustment goes down a little farther. Now, as far as structural integrity goes, this is what the internals of this engine look like. So this is a 20 horse block, 20 stock, 20 horse crank, stock, 20 horse heads, it has a stock 20 horse intake manifold, but it has a 23 horse carb on it. It's a stock 23 horse carb, stock 20 horse pistons, or just the Briggs cast pistons. There's no really no need for billet pistons here. I mean, the stock pistons are more than strong enough. And then where the money comes in is right here. The timing advance key, which is basically a half offset key which gives you I think it's about 10 or 15 degrees of timing advance and I'm not I do not have the cam set up so it's advanced the tooth I have another Vanguard it's a 16 horse that has a 23 horse cam in it same engine that the carb came from the luckily the cam was savable the uh, it, it did throw the rods due to an oiling problem it was ran low on oil actually this engine was ran low on oil and it broke a rod. Matter of fact, and, and here you can see the the broken section on the um, on the block there. But it wasn't too much to be worried about. But you can see how discolored the block is, and that was from how much heat was inside the engine due to it being ran low in oil. These are the connecting rods that are in this engine. Six two seven three or six two seven five. It's hard to hard to tell the part number in the picture, but they're ARC billet aluminum connecting rods, and they have replaceable roll-in style bearings like your car engine or the bigger Onans like that Onan T two sixty G down there. The camshaft is a performance V twin ground cam. It came from CartsPartsPlus.com but you can get performance cams from all over the place. Um, it's The timing is set up straight. 
on this one just because I don't want to have valve clearance issues. I don't want to have valves running into the uh, into the pistons at higher RPM. And being that it's a performance ground cam, there is no governor on it. Like I said, it's it's cut on a Briggs and Stratton blank, so there's no governor on it. And I in my comment on Sprocket's video, I said that the engine in this thing is pretty much bulletproof. And the reason for that being is I have the throttle limited to only half throttle. And half throttle on this thing without the governor, I haven't actually, I don't actually have a tack hooked up to it, but based on what it sounds like, I would guess that it's, it, rev, it revs out to about 4,000 4, to 4,200 RPM would be my guess. And I just have a bicycle brake cable on there for now. It's not the preferred way to do that. I'm going to upgrade that come spring. Uh, it, it does have stronger valve, str uh, valve springs in it. I did I did opt for that. You can put... Uh, I think I can't remember what site it was. I, I don't remember if it was ARC or if it was Performance V-Twin. But there's some company out there, they make spacers which are basically just flat washers you put underneath the spring to put a little more tension on the spring but then you run into the possibility of coil bind because of the excessive throw of the performance camshaft and then finally and this engine has performance v-twin roller rockers so it does not have the stock uh, stamp steel rockers and really there's nothing wrong with the stamp steel rockers this is the roller rockers with the roller tips that relieves more possible friction inside the engine. But other than that, I mean, it's kind of just a plain Jane engine. There's nothing that's been done to the oiling system. There's nothing that's been done to the pistons. Nothing that's been done to the rings. It's just standard bore engine, standard crank. The rods are not even the long rods. They're just standard size rods, so it's not really that much of a high compression engine per se. Although it does have the thin single layer steel head gaskets it does not have the multi-layer gaskets the multi-layer gaskets they're, it's going to work just as good probably if not even a little bit better possibly but being that they're thicker more combustion there's more room in the combustion chamber which means you're going to have lower compression ratio so that's why i opted for those head gaskets but overall yeah i mean there's really no reason to delete the camshaft governor assembly on a Vanguard. There's just no no reason for it. Now, if I do have one recommendation for anyone that is going to run without the governor, if you don't buy any other parts, those two connecting rods right there, spend the money on those rods. I don't remember what the price is. I'm not even going to quote them right now all i know is that all the parts that have been put into this engine it's up there it's in the four digit range and it's a lot it's a lot of money to stick into a into an engine for well in this case a ratty garden tractor but this thing is just meant to be a little hot rod so that's exactly what it turned out to be but yeah, the money racks up quick, but if there's one thing you do and everything else is stock, I would really recommend ARC connecting rods. Because in that way you don't run the risk of blowing a connecting rod, because when it blows a connecting rod, you're probably about 80% likely to window the block. And you have a pretty good chance, it's, to me from what I've seen parting out vanguards over the years, I mean, heck, there's three starters that are visible right there so you know that actually four so i've parted out at least four blowing up vanguards over the years and took all the parts to make this good one it's about a 50 50 shot of the cam breaking and usually the cam breaks right here or right where that oil hole is there's there's an oil hole right down in there right there you guys can see it now so the cam usually breaks off clean and I've also had it, actually this engine here had a broken cam in it. It was broken in two places. The gear section, so pretty much right here where my finger is, from here to the end was one section. From here 
down to the snout where it's turned down to fit into the block was broken off and then this stub like where it's turned down this was stuck in the block i had to get a drywall screw to kind of grab to the inside and pull out it wasn't really stuck in there it was just broken off flush because the connecting rod got jammed between the the crank and when the crank came around it just knocked the whole center section right out so it's something to be be aware of when you're hopping up these vanguards but overall they're very 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 stout motors i know midwest super cub with their pulling tractors they primarily deal with Kohler commands and they have a lot of parts to make the Kohler commands decent but there is a lot of parts out there for vanguards as well and at the end of the day you're probably still going to end up spending about the same amount of money to hop up one of these engines to the same level but i'll tell you it's fun you guys want to hear this thing run i've got other videos on my ch channel if you look back from a couple of months ago you'll be able to hear this thing run and drive it's currently all packed away for winter because well, there's no point in having it out. Not to mention it's so darn loud that I don't even really like running around the house here. Being that it's just straight piped. But with that being said, I guess that's enough rambling for me. I've explained my views on the situation. And I totally agree that there's no point whatsoever to delete the governor on a Vanguard. Even though I have one that's deleted. But like I said, it's got a lot of really, really strong internals in this engine. So there's no reason that it would ever explode on me. And not to mention the throttle only being limited. It limits my RPM. So I don't have the possibility of running this engine to six grand, seven grand going wide open. As I'm sure it would. I know the cam, I believe, was rated for around five or six grand, I believe. And that was the safe operating range of the camshaft before it would grenade itself. So I'm not running anything near the breaking point. And for that reason, it should make this engine last a really long time. Actually, I don't think about it. You guys go. There's some shiny parts down in there. So with that being said... That's all I've got, and uh, time for me to get back to work on some other tractors, and I will catch you all later.